Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner, uh, section 5.13 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, 2nd edition. If I go too fast, you can always rewind. Questions go in video responses or the comments below. So currents. A current is a charge per unit time. Okay, So it's Q over T. And we talk about currents at a point. That means you take any point in space and you look at how much current is flowing through that point. Okay, Not how much charge is accumulating not how much charge is moving around the point, but how much it's moving through that particular point in space. The measurement of currents is the ampere, representative A. One ampere is one coulomb per second. Not second, one coulomb per second. And ampere is actually pretty large value. You generally don't deal with amperes unless you're dealing with, you know, um, transformers and power supplies and things like that. And, high voltage electronics and electricity and you probably don't want to deal with that um, unless you really know what you're doing. Um, you know, milliamps is generally what you're going to see in regular electric circuits and um, unless you get struck by lightning or stick your finger into a socket you're not going to experience amperes. Um, and yes it is the amps that kill you. Um, but high voltage will generate a lot of amps anyway. Um, now the second question is, is it positive charges moving one way? Or is it negative charges moving the other way? And the answer is it does not matter. Um, you measure how much charge flows to the point. If it's negative charge traveling backwards, it's the same as positive charge moving forwards. In the Hall effect, when we get to that, it is important that it's the, the electrons, the negative charges moving um, across the conductor. But other than that, it really doesn't matter. Um, the Hall effect is really kind of weird. Um, and it, it earned the name effect because it kind of gives you a surprising result that you wouldn't expect to see. So that's what the word effect uh, inspires. Okay. So um, generally, if you have some line, and then you have some uniform charge density lambda, and the charges are moving across this line uniformly so that no charge is accumulating at some velocity v, or I should say speed v, right? because the velocity is changing, the direction is changing as it goes along the line. Then I, which is what we use for I vector, is just equal to lambda V vector at each point. Okay, So it is a field, um, just like uh, the charge density fields, rho. Um, it has a vector, it has a direction at every point in space. It could be the zero, like there's no charge flowing here, so the current here is zero, but over here the current flowing this way is uh, the how much ever density is on this line and how much ever is moving. Okay, uh, the magnetic force. Remember, force equals QV cross B. Well, in this case, what you can do is you take the integral of the charge density per unit line length times the length times the velocity cross the magnetic field, which is the same as taking the current I cross B multiplied by the tiny length segment that you're looking at. Okay, I equals lambda V. Look at there, lambda V, and there's DL. Okay, so that's the way you can calculate the force at any point along that moving charge. Of course, where there's no moving charge, where the current is zero, there is no magnetic force. Um, when the magnetic field and the um, DL vector, <sighs> oh, here we go. So as, as long as it's moving in the same direction, as long as the I and DL point in the same direction. So if you're taking this integral along the path, okay, you're not like taking some weird mucky path. You're like actually following the line that we're talking about. Then you can use this simple formula because I dl is just the magnitude I. And then you take the dl vector cross B vector. Remember, dl vector is the, is the component of the integral. So if the integral is going along the path, then the dl vector is going to match the velocity. So there you go. And uh, you can pull that I, of course, out because it's constant. So you get this handy dandy. Um, integral that will express to you 
using just the magnetic force, the amount of force applied at any point along that path. The total force, if this thing is rigid, it'll give you the total force. Anyway, uh, next is example three, and then we're going to talk about surface charge densities and the new example four. Thanks for your time.